uh, ladies and gentlemen, we move on to our session two. That's incubators perspective on technology adoption and challenges. We have two chairpersons for this session. Mr. Samir Mehta, the vice president of CAHO, is a very known personality and a good friend. Mr. Mehta is the chief investment director of the Atlas Family Office and the vice chairman of Dr. Mehta's hospitals in Chennai. Samir is the co-founder of a number of entities, including India Home Healthcare, Arya Play Games, Atlas Intelligence, and participates on various national healthcare and investment advisory committees. He is the member of the Institute of Directors, the Indus Entrepreneurs and Entrepreneurs Organization, EO. We have our next cha chairperson, who is uh, Mr. Avinash Aradhya who is a second-generation family business entrepreneur inspired to contribute to improving healthcare. He co-founded Health Minds to work with uh, artificial intelligence, AI, medtech, and pharma companies with research and data analytics, medical writing and communications, clinical data management, validations, trials, and pharmacovigilance. He is an engineer alumnus of the Purdue University, mainly dealing with artificial intelligence and social impact projects is where his key areas of interest are. I will go ahead to introduce the speakers also before I hand over to our chairpersons. Mr. Muthu Singaram is the Chief Executive Officer of Healthcare Technology Innovation Center, IIT Madras, Chennai. He has over 30 years of varied experience in startups, technology and management. He's also the co-founder of many medtech startups, including Ultimate Startups, Muthu Singaram Consulting, Viva Zone. For this, I hand over to the chairpersons of this session. Over to you, Sam and Avinash. Thanks, Anna. Uh, I think uh, we're all, we've been looking forward to Kaho Tech for a long time, and uh, I so wish we could have done it in person, but that's not the case this year. The reason we're sitting here today is so that our tomorrows are better than our yesterdays. And I think in many ways, this specific session is a testament for that. We would not have had this, if you rewind the clock, 80 years ago when Dr. Mehta's was set up uh, in 1933, uh, we didn't have incubators. We didn't have the concept of accelerators. In fact, if you even look at 10 years back, we didn't have too many in the health technology space. I think the first one at IIT Madras and perhaps IIT Bombay and Delhi were starting to see their earliest days. And I think the reason we're doing that is the reality is most in health, in most industries, startups and making an entrepreneurial success of any venture is tough. They say over 50% fail within the first five to 10 years. The reality, I think, personally in healthcare is that we'll be lucky to see 20% succeed. And that's why I think having these accelerators and incubators to help us with those earliest of steps, the highest of riskiest of steps makes a big difference. And especially in technology ventures that are related to health, because whether you're doing B2C, going directly to consumers, trying to do a platform, whether it's telemedicine, whether it's some sort of... Uh, health booking, whether it's some pharma or drug management system uh, or even ordering, those are areas where you need to understand your customer, make sure your user experience is well met. When you start going B2B, either selling to hospitals or clinics or doctors, right? That's a very different beast. In India, we may have 80,000 hospitals on paper. We may have 30,000 registered with insurance companies. But the reality is I call India has some maybe 10,000 hospitals with some sort of recognized leadership team. Uh, if you look at beyond that, which have IT departments, you're starting to go divided, right? So it comes down to around 3,000. Navigating these weird pathways needs help. And that's why we have three wonderful speakers. We have folks who are deep in medtech. We have folks who are deep in digital health. And more importantly, we have folks who do a combination of B2B and B2C. And I think that melding together of these different components in the early phase of a life of any venture helps. Uh, 
And I think with that, let me pass it to Avinash and perhaps he'll give a little bit more glamour to it and then we'll allow our speakers to come and uh, add some spice to the day and make our tomorrows better. Thank you, Sam. Uh, so it's with the same spirit um, that we were, uh, you know, talking about uh, that to assist uh, the startups, uh, you know, as in their initial days, uh, you know, Kaho has also set up um, the uh, technology committee uh, and, uh, you know, to help um, in, and engage with uh, incubators and uh, startups in, in engaging with uh, hospitals whether it is with proof of concepts or, uh, you know, in helping them uh, reach out to all the hospitals at large. Uh, and um, I, I'm a new member to CAHO and it has been a very exciting journey for me as well uh, to learn uh, about the organization and uh, with the energy and uh, the spirit with which uh, they're working. And um, I would like to uh, request Mr. Mathu Singaram to speak a few words. Thank you. One of the things I think we, we need to focus as uh, incubators, we, we, we focus quite a bit on mentoring, but unfortunately the mentoring comes in two parts. I think we're very, very good at the technical mentoring. We lack a lot of it on the, to, in terms of taking them to market and making them understand markets. So I think ecosystem players like incubators, accelerators should focus on helping these startups to go to market, to understand who their customers is, I think in terms of funding, we're doing okay in terms of grants and also in terms of expansion, but we struggle in the middle somewhere how to survive. So a lot of them don't actually get past that, I think. So that is something we, we really need to look at. Policies from the central, I think we are doing okay, but many of the state local policies, I think we are maybe not that well settled. So I think we need to make a cohesive to all the states within India. And I think we also need to differentiate between co-working spaces, accelerators, and incubators. Uh, they're often used as all the same, but they really aren't. They all offer different things. And we keep saying at any rate at HDIC, we don't want to be a infrastructure player. We don't want to do rental because rental can be done by our research park. We don't want to be doing that. So we've been very, very particular with that. We don't want to do that. And the other area I think we are sort of struggling a little bit is startups themselves working together in collaborative mode. They, I mean, even in my own incubator, we probably have maybe four or five people working almost around the same area and they try to stay away from each other. I, I think if we can put all of them together, we might actually have a bigger success. So basically what I'm saying is that we have block one block, two block, three block, the building gets higher if all five of them get together. Now they're all trying to sit only as one block. So I think that's something we as uh, incubators, accelerators, hospitals, we need to encourage that and also co-creation. I think some of these things are still lacking. I wouldn't say they're missing, that would be a wrong word. They probably are lacking, which we need to work at. When I think Sam started out saying 10 years ago, we had nothing. When I first started 25 years ago, 30 years ago, you had to borrow money from your father or your mother or somebody. Nobody would give you any money. But, and at those days, even your father and mother would say, what is this? Why did you go to engineering? Why did you do medicine? Why, what, are we, what are you doing here? You know, so I think those have changed now. I mean, we have run, there's so many grants, 50,000 rupees a month just to work on something for 18 months. I mean, there's so many of those going out there. So all that is getting better. And I think we're getting better and better. Talent wise, we are we are there. We just to need to make sure that talent is put to the right use. So I think with that, uh, either I stop there and then we, we can continue with further discussions as we go on. Thank you, Mathu. Look, I, I think we've come a long way, but we still have a long way to go. But when we meet a lot of the entrepreneurs that are there, a lot of them start coming to us either from a hospital side of view or an investment side of view. And they say, give us the money, right? Uh, without a lot of proof of concept. Mm -hmm. And that we're finding a, a high amount of challenge that especially in early stage digital health, which seems to have much higher valuation uh, interest at the moment, mm -hmm. or in med tech, which has really long gestation periods. Right. Uh, we have, we seem to see these two patterns. One is, that the main ask is money rather than the main ask being give us help to get to a stage gate that proves to customers that we have a useful product. I think that's one. The second thing is typically around uh, 
pricing of the product, right? When you bundle a product and you bundle services, most of the folks, especially around things like digital health, which perhaps you can distribute or aggregate around many customers, that ability to concentrate and think ahead saying that, look, let me get some early customers. Let me not be too expensive on them. That model doesn't seem to have quite percolated. Why is that? Now, I think the funding part is easy to answer. Most of us, a lot of the startups start startups thinking as soon as they start a startup, they make plenty of money. So their goal is to is the wrong objective. So I think that's why you end up with all these people coming and saying, hey, we want money, we want money. So I think we need to correct that. And I remember working out of in a, in a small town in Canada in Fredericton. When we give $25,000, which is not a lot of money, you will see so many applications because they really think that $25,000 will take them to a, to a big place. Now, if you put in here five lakhs, you, you don't get too many applications because it doesn't, they are not very keen with five lakhs. But $25,000 is actually less than five lakhs, I think, if I'm not mistaken. But still, people will come. Oh, it's maybe more, I can't remember. That's not the point. Let's look at it as $25,000, $25,000 rupees. And people will still come for that. No one would come here. So I think that is where we are struggling. We need to educate our entrepreneurs that there's a lot more than just making money out of it. They have to create value. And pricing, the problem with pricing, and sometimes I sympathize. See, if you start with the price at a lower rate, as you pick up, it's very difficult to push the price back up. So, because often people believe that as you make more and more, just like uh, telephones, 20 years ago, a telephone cost you a fortune. Today, you can buy a telephone for a thousand rupees. So I think that's where the startups get a little wary. If they start low, they'll not be able to pick up on the price. So this, these are, I think, some of the issues startups are facing. Uh, I would like to uh, also understand, see, we have uh, talked about startups, but talking about even mature companies coming to, uh, you know, organizations for uh, development, of uh, products or doing R and D, uh, I thought it would be great if Muthu can uh, answer this in terms of uh, to give us ideas and uh, examples of how uh, our audience, uh, you know, members in our audience can look to engage with organizations such as yours to come out with um, new products. I think we are a little unique. Uh, HDIC has got two parts to it, and we actually started with research about seven years ago, and most of the research we do there is not academic research. So it actually comes from industry. So if industry comes along, it's not either contract research. It's actually, they will give us a problem and we try and look for solution. So for example, some of you might know, uh, HDIC came up, the first project, mobile eye surgical unit is the only surgical unit approved by government of India. We probably have done about 20,000 surgeries right now. We don't have any issues in raising the funds to get the mobile units out, but we're not able to find people who would actually work on them. So that's actually a bigger problem. But if that is able to go out, they're able to do cataract operations on, on sites in remote areas at very, very minimal cost. So that's one of the things we had done. Another one we had done is a neonatal uh, incubator, which is parked in the, when you transport a child from remote areas into the city where the child is uncomfortable, it makes the child comfortable in terms of temperature, in terms of movement and so on. We also have another company, which is one of the largest companies for den dengue kit manufacturers. And they wanted an immuno assay testing done, which they are probably one of our largest uh, customers we have. We have now done iPod, which is a point of care unit where you can do testing just by drop of blood in remote areas. They can just plug it in and it will give them the results in a few minutes and it can be sent out to cloud or whatever. So that's something which we have developed and it's a very high, uh, it's a very high end project. And we're also now working with that same organization, but with another company of theirs, making India's foot endoscope. Now that's something which we already have a customer. So if whenever it's done, it will be taken there, they will take it to market. Another one we have done for a startup in Bangalore is on the eye care. Again, it will give early detection uh, of early eye disease for diagnostics. So these are some of the things we have done. Now, I think it, a lot of times um, research centers are reluctant because when you take up a project at some of the projects I've mentioned, there's always timeline. And these guys who are paying for it are always on your back. It is not like you just do research and it doesn't work, you forget about it. If it doesn't work, they don't pay us. And we have 80 people in the payroll. So it has to definitely produce whatever we promise it will do. Otherwise, they will not pay us. So it is something 
I think we need to be separated. Of course, we do need basic research, otherwise we're not going to get very far with other things. So we need to, I think, divide both. So at our center, we primarily do research work for industry. And because we do that, we're able to help the startups also to the expertise we have on the other side. So I think that is something we've been very fortunate with. So I hope that sort of uh, answers your question. So I think we have done, sometimes hospitals come to us as well and ask us to do things and we, we tend to do them. But you need to also be cautious uh, in a place like ours because we need every project, you know, we need to work on the costing again. And, and as the project finished, we may not have any more work for that particular researcher. So that also puts a lot of pressure on the center. So we need to ensure that projects we take are you know at least reasonable length of time so they're able to keep on giving our research i mean we have to keep them engaged and of course we have to pay them because we have to raise our own funding to pay them so those are the challenges i think we face because if we don't price it properly or we don't get enough um uh, if enough people don't buy it then we was we also have a problem because then the end customer is not willing to pay for it right so that's something which we need to look at now, why do some of these people come to us? Because we have equipment, we have technology, we have staff, which means they, they also get it at a better rate. They don't have, they can focus on their business models, which they are good at. So I think uh, that's that's how we work at the center. Uh, great, thank you. Because in digital health, we're starting to see a pattern of founders connect, right? Health tech, in our opinion, whether it's digital health or whether it's med medical devices, seem to need more complex teams to operate and succeed. They're not simple teams. And this is something we have a lot of entrepreneurs listening and technology companies listening on this call. So that's something we really want them to take away. How do you put, put together these teams where the entrepreneur groups or the founder groups evolve over time as the maturity of the project gets closer to the market or the customer? And Mutu, right. you've done things like this, right? I, I've seen some of your events at HTIC. I, I, NASCOM, I think, has a great model. Uh, I think this is something that we all have to learn because I don't, I haven't seen a perfect answer here, at least in India, in health tech. So one of the things I think we can do, and long time ago, one of my dear friends told me, we are all very good at doing arranged marriages, right? So we should also do this sort of arrange partnership, force a partnership between various people to make things happen. So if I'm good at technology and you're good at marketing, you should force both of us to get along and we've done pretty well in that area, right? So, I mean, I know it's a very, it's maybe not a great uh, analogy, but I think that makes sense. If you bring, if you can actually force this sort of partnership, let them work. I mean, we try, but the other problem with us as well, we always think we want to beat the other guy. I think that's something we need to sort of, uh, I mean, I remember, I'm not going to talk about any stories in India. I have a story in Malaysia. I remember going to University of Malaya at 20, uh, maybe maybe 15, 18 years ago. And the vice chancellor was a good friend of mine. And he asked me to go and check what everyone is doing. So I brought two people that have been together in the same department for 20 years. And they were both working on the same thing for the last 20 years. And the vice chancellor nearly fell off his chair. He couldn't believe that he had two people spending all this money in the university working for 20 years and got nowhere. And somebody like me who just came from outside went to all the departments and found these two people and brought it to them. And you won't believe it. They were unwilling to work with each other even though they haven't got any results out of it after 20 years. So I think that mindset, I think we need to change and maybe learn from the Silicon Valley model. It's okay, you know, to share, to fail, learn quickly and make make some good progress. And like Steve Blanks was saying the other day, you know, Silicon Valley model is different from anywhere even within the US. It, they, they allow people to fail and they translate it to experience. Here, if you fail, people say, ah, he, got, he went to IIT, got a degree, went and did startup and now he's no job, right? So instead of saying he, he actually might have tried something for three years or maybe we can, I think that is changing now. Companies are willing to take failed entrepreneurs into their system, which was not the case when I first started. People in the audience were very, you of you when you're an entrepreneur, they didn't want to take you because they always thought you would steal something and run away, right? So I think that mindset has to change. So I think this uh, arranging people to get together, some of these networking events, I think it's it, it would work. It's like speed dating, they call it. I think tie to a certain extent tries that. 
speed dating people together and see whether it works. Uh, I mean, those are things we have to work towards, I guess. So uh, the uh, question, um, you know, that we had was, you know, to help uh, scale uh, all these startups or all these new technologies that are out there. Uh, the real question to all the hospitals and the healthcare um, companies in the ecosystem, I'd like to know how many of you are actually part of, uh, you know, running clinical trials or, you know, uh, innovation trials, uh, you know, and engaging with all these startups. And uh, what we'd like to leave, uh, you know, the, the, as a last note is that the more engaged we are uh, with all these startups and uh, innovation companies uh, and, and, and uh, an opportunity for the doctors to take part in uh, these uh, trials. I think uh, it it will uh, you know speed up the whole ecosystem in terms of coming out with new products and uh, you know, encourage the whole system to be more productive. So with that, uh, uh, Sam, uh, I think you, you can take. Yeah, it. I'd like to thank a fantastic panel. I think, uh, this was a great uh, session, Avinash. Thanks. Uh, uh, but uh, on a more serious note, I think for all of you startups out there. I think take advice and take the help of these fantastic accelerators and incubators around the country. And then now in every part of the country, there are specialists, there are generalists, but there are folks that understand health deeply. Take their help. That's one. For all the doctors and the hospital participants out there, help the startup, right? Because if you don't start at least meeting girls, you'll never get married. Or if you meet boys, you'll never even meet, understand that the, uh, entire male sex is worth spending some time with, right? Uh, so on a really serious basis, my uh, suggestion is spend time with folks and learn, be interested, be curious. And I think with that, uh, we hope that you help create a better tomorrow than our yesterdays, right? That's really why we're here in Kaho Tech. Um, and I think with that, thanks a lot. Thanks. Wonderful panel.